What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah, I'm back. I'm back to making videos. We have a lot to talk about, so this video is probably going to be fairly long. I'm trying to get out of that light. Um, yes, I moved. Yes, I have more tanks, a little bit more creatures, and we'll be going over all of that. So stay tuned. All right, so while he's out, while he's out, I'm going to show y'all. And for those of you that don't know what this is, this is a giant Vietnamese centipede. <laughs> Poisonous, yes. Um, so I have his enclosure under little locks and whatnot. I have my temperature set. He's doing really, really well in here. Very active at night and whatnot, but yeah, just thought I'd show you why he was out. We'll go to the reptile room now and I'll show you guys what we got down there and let you know on the projects. So I was a little hesitant to show this one off because it does indeed need a water change and some water in it. Been busy the last couple of days, but somebody talked me into starting to film for the YouTube channel. So I was like, all right, I'll film. Yes, you'll notice. I have, I actually have a breeding pair of Lion's Cove cichlids in here, a breeding pair of Jala Reef, which are, uh, that's my peacock, which are right here, and his females here, uh, two yellow labs, and I still, from a long time ago, still have my pair of true Siamese algae eaters. Yes. Frank's still in here, and this little guy that we have here, his name is Scooter. He is a Florida soft shell, and for those who haven't seen the other videos, this is Frank, the Razorback Musk. He's been with these fish, well, been with the Siamese algae eaters for a long time. Uh, almost a year, going on a year, a little longer than a year. Has not gone after the fish, and you also notice that the, the, um, what is it, the dinosaur Bashar that I used to have in here is gone. He was one of the ones that was actually going for my fish as well. Um, we have some crazy placos in here. We have a gold nugget. We have a rubber lip in here somewhere. And we have a, I believe it's a snowball. And then we have, I think I said blue phantom already. Yeah, I don't know where the blue phantom's at. I will try to find him. There is the rubber lip and then the blue phantom. The blue phantom's by far probably my favorite one because he has a lot more white on him than normal. Um, also, oh, crazy, they're out now. I have some giant Danios in here. <coughs> and some Garami, some dwarf electric blue Garamis. All of them seem to be, oh, except for that, right as I, right as I want to film, they want to start being jerks. <coughs> we also... I found him the other day. I thought he disappeared somehow. Don't ask how. But he comes out every once in a while whenever I feed. I have a spotted Raphael cat in here. But yeah. Without further ado, let's get these guys some food. Crazy. And yes, they, look, they act like they're starving. But for many of you that keep cichlids... I feed these guys every other day. I know it's a lot, but maybe a lot, I don't know. They seem to be hungry constantly, so. I feed them a mixture of the carnivore diet and the herbivore diet, I think it's called, I don't know, whatever. I'm still half asleep, guys, so bear with me on this one. But yeah, they're in. And we will get some, uh, these guys act like they don't eat either. Trust me, I, f I feed them. I'm not, I don't neglect my animals whatsoever. But I will drop some blood worms in them for them here in a little while. For now, let's work our way downstairs to the reptile room. Fun fact, actually, before we do that, check this out. So that is live moss growing on this, on this stump here. 
Um, I still have the Fluval Aqua Sky across. I want to get two of them, but I think that'll be too much light. Like this is perfect amount of light. Like this is this is beautiful. This tank is beautiful. Um, but I put some. I think it's Dwarf Baby Tears, the ones that float around the top in here. And some of them stuck to this log, surprisingly, and then started doing this, I guess. I don't really know the full length of it, but yeah. All right, let's go to the reptile room, guys. All right, welcome to the reptile room. Yeah, we got some plants over here. These are actually plants that I bought from Florida that I'm currently growing. Um, yeah, they were gonna go in a, <clears throat> in an enclosure, but I currently don't have that animal anymore because I'm swapping from I'm swapping from big lizards to uh, turtles and fish tanks. A little easier, a little less maintenance for what I need to do, a little less attention than what I than what I need. But currently, we have a 75 and a 40 gallon breeder that I just picked up. This is gonna house another turtle. I'm still debating on what turtle I wanna put in there. I'm really leaning towards a, not gonna tell y'all yet, <laughs> but then we have the 40 gallon breeder. Um, I'm debating on what I wanna do in here as well. I mean, I have these two empty tanks, so I, I, the possibilities are endless right now. Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a miniature, like a mini predator tank in here, or doing that, the predator tank, and having a turtle in, the turtle in here. I don't know yet, but I have the plenty of filtration for either one of them, so we're good there. These are actually two Eheim 2017s and then an Eheim 2013. So the 2013 will probably go on the 40 gallon breeder, and then one of those will probably go on, on to the 75. And then actually, one of these will probably go upstairs on that other tank to work a surface skimmer just to help aid in filtration. So now, as you can see, the bullfrog paludarium is empty. I will give you all the update um, here shortly of why this is empty and nothing is in here. Um, this here is Ollie. She is a sweetheart. This is my diamondback terrapin I had uh, given to me. And she is in here with about five uh, high fin or sail fin, whatever y'all want to call them, high fin night gobies. And I got these really, really small. And as you can see, they are doing very, very, very well. I don't know where my fifth one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, they're all out front. Um, she eats blood worms too. She'll go after these cuddle, these uh, caudal bones as well. Um, the water is brackish too. Uh, so the, the gobies are doing very well in that. They clean up after her, keep the tank looking very, very, very clean. I have no um, Placo in here. I have no no form of algae eater or anything. And as you can see, the substrate is very, very clean. Like, except for that there, which, and that there, which is cotton. I'd say fairly normal for some rocks in a brackish water tank. Um, but the substrate is very, very, very picked through and clean because of these gobies. She does not pay any attention to them. She is more entertained in people coming in and out of here and looking at them and whatnot than the fish. And she's more, she goes more after the blood worms than anything. And I keep saying she... She's still small, or he or she is still small, so I can't really tell, but from the looks of how she, how like her claws are coming in and whatnot, I do believe she is a female. <clears throat> and I'm too, I'm unsure of if she, she doesn't appear to be a blue, um, and I believe they're called centrics. I'm not too they're sure. Called concentric um, diamondback terrapins. I'm, I'm pretty sure she is one because of the white on her. She has a, a lot of white and it's almost like a yellow hazel tint to her shell. But um, yeah, she's doing fairly well. I had a thermometer on here just to see. I had it running. This tank's been up for probably, oh, I'd say two, three months now. 
And as soon as I got her, I got the night gobies because I read on some forum that they are a really good brackish water cleanup crew. And so far, I mean, like I explained earlier, they do a phenomenal job. Um, the filtration will probably need a, a revamp here soon. What I'm probably going to do is leave the same system because it works really well. It's, uh, it's a, uh, what is that? Uh, Pinflex Cascade. It's one of those cheaper canister filters from uh, Petco. But what I'm probably going to do is order off Amazon one of those surface skimmers like we put on, um, I believe we showed y'all, on Mike's bow front tank. Um, sorry, the heater just kicked on. I keep this room at like 75 degrees, something like that, 72, 75. Um, but I had a thermometer and whatnot up underneath here to measure what the heat was when the water went down lower than what I, I wanted it to. And whenever I brought it up to normal, like filled it up to normal, this is about, that's about normal height. So um, for those of you who do not know, keep your terrapins in brackish water. I hear a lot of people back and forth about saying, uh, if you put, if they're raised in fresh water, they'll be fine in fresh water, blah, blah, blah. The salt water, the salt will actually help them shed their scoots a lot better and will honestly prevent them from any sort of shell rot. Uh, fresh, water has, fresh water has a lot more bacteria in it from what I've been reading and from what I've been told from um, terrapin keepers than, than brackish water. So it actually helps her. And whenever I got her, she had a little bit of a little bit of issues with her shell. She wasn't too messed up at all. She was still a little pretty happy Ollie she is. And you can kind of see she's shedding her scoots now. Um, I had I help every once in a while whenever I see them come up, I'll grab her because she loves to be, I'll show you. She loves, loves the attention. See, absolutely loves it. And we'll bring her over here underneath the light so y'all can see her, her beautiful face. She is an absolute doll and very, very, very active. So let's go ahead and put you back in, Ollie. Put her up there, bloop. This tank is currently a, I believe it's a 55. I have a Fiji rock in there and then a loose piece of coral that I had gifted to me from a friend. So whenever I got Ollie, the friend that gave me her, gave me the tank as well, a little bit of the substrate, and um, that piece actually there. Um, another friend gave me the light, this LED over on this side, and I, I already had the basking bulb and the UV light. Uh, obviously, common essentials really really essential to shell growth and, and whatnot for turtles. <clears throat> but yeah, I really want to start expanding her diet a little bit more. I want to start giving her a little bit more variety than just blood worms and whatnot. Um, I want to actually give her a proper terrapin diet. So I'd give her a uh, shrimp every once in a while. She'll take chunks out of these coddle bones. Let's see if I still have the one that's got her bite mark in it up here. Yeah, she'll take take some pretty decent bites out of the coddle bone. I got a couple sunken in there right now as she goes after. Um, she's just a blast. She's a blast to watch, a blast. That she loves to be handled for some random reason. She's not scared of people. A little bit of information um, I forgot to add about this tank. Uh, for all of you who haven't, who have or want to keep a terrapin, and as bad as it sounds, if you can find one for sale. Uh, brackish water form. I use one of these guys here. Nothing fancy. But I'll usually keep it. I'll, it'll range from uh, 1.0 or 1.010 to 1.013. I'll keep it in this area uh, too much. And it will actually, from what I heard, it'll affect the, the turtle. Um, probably won't affect the fish. I don't know. I really don't want to give that a, ch uh, give that a shot to go higher because I don't want to hurt anything in this tank. I don't want to hurt any animals, um, or fish, but I've noticed they've been really happy. Um, 
ever since I started doing that. Her shell started looking really, really, really good uh, when I stayed in this area here. Um, and I just used the basic, um, let's see, I still got an empty box in here. Let's see. It is the Instant Ocean. Um, I picked mine up for 10 bucks. Um, I get the three pound. I need to get the bigger one because that water, since it is an open top tank, the water likes to evaporate really fast. And since it is hot in here, this thing keeps kicking on. But yeah, I use this stuff. I'll mix it with hot, hot water in a five gallon bucket. So it, it dissolves a lot quicker. Measure that out. Um, and then let it cool off. I'll sit it down here, let it get to room temperature, and then I'll dump it into this tank. <clears throat> Other than that, scraper, um, keep the calcium, uh, calcium creep or the salt creep off the sides. Um, I dripped some water one time and it, it got it pretty bad, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cut my hand before I, or cup, yeah, cut my hand before I drop that into there and let it dissolve into there. Um, but yeah, it's nothing fancy yet, just a basic heater and whatnot, and I'll do the surface skimmer because I noticed this stuff uh, it likes some surface material likes to accumulate on this side because the filters down into the water not at the top so I'll get a surface skimmer for this one um, and she actually the reason why you may be asking why I don't have the little elbow over the top and three suction cups here well because she likes to wedge herself in between and she actually broke I don't know if I still have it down here in the trash yeah I got it in the trash down here there was a little nipple on the end of here that the, the hose slid onto, and they have the thread piece. She snapped that clean off from putting too much pressure behind it and wedging herself in between there and doing her uh, her little normal turtle things. So this one, this tank was a little mangled when I got it, um, but we turned it into something pretty cool. I need to take the basket out of there because the fish that I keep trying to put in there is keeps jumping out and there yes there are fish in here which is really really bad because i didn't have tanks at the time and now i have tanks but long story short those filters over there i'm waiting for some parts to come in because i can't run them just yet but yeah one of the fish is actually out right now and i don't know if y'all are too familiar with fish and whatnot but that is called a water cow goby and i really want to keep him which is why i was trying to keep him in the basket for now because his colors, as you can see, are magnificent. They are they are awesome. They are by far the best colors I've seen on one of these fish from all the videos and pictures I've seen. He's got a lot more marble to him. But I wanted to give this tank a little more natural look, hence why I'm letting the letting it get kind of fairly dirty. I've I keep up on it. Uh I keep up on it every every other week or so i'll come down and scrub some of the calcium off like this it's due for it um i need to actually build i need to come down here again and build stands for all these tanks and whatnot but that's a that's a whole nother project i'll film but what is actually in here we have somehow or another acquired a giant daniel in here which is beside this like I don't know how. Um, we have the water cow goby. And then down underneath here, you can kind of see his face. We have Elvis, the alligator snapping turtle. He is doing really well. He has gotten ginormous. I would try to get him out, but I didn't bring bloodworms down here with me and he's kind of a mean turtle. Yeah, so, oh, there we go. There's a better shot. Look at the marble in him. Really, really beautiful fish. And he's mean too. Hence why I want to do the predator tank in one of these. Because I put him, fun fun story. Uh no yes, fish were harmed in the, the making the this story, but we managed to help them out and save them. He grabbed hold of one of my orange cichlids in the tank two minutes after setting the fish in there after doing the um 
oh, what do you call it? The acclimation process. Um, we set the fish in there, they were doing good, and then I looked down and I noticed my orange one was gone. Well, he was about, I would say dorsal fin deep in his mouth. And we managed to get a pair of tongs in there and scare him to where he spit it. And then we moved him down into this tank. So he's doing, he's doing very, very well down here, but yeah. Uh, this one's got an Eheim. Um, yes, it's an Eheim. Eheim something, I forgot. I have the box in the other room. Um, for any of you guys wondering if I'm sponsored by Eheim, because I have so many Eheim filters. No, I am not. I don't have a single sponsor whatsoever for this channel. Nothing. Um, I just... And Fluval, too. I have a Fluval Aquas guy on here. No, I'm not sponsored by them either. I don't have a single sponsor. This is all done as my hobby. Um, but yeah, we have a um, Eheim box canister back here. We have a Fluval Aquas guy on here. Um, normal tank heater. And then we have just a couple plants in there that the turtle like to uproot. So I got to fix those. I just noticed that today. But there's that tank there. Um, I will be trying to build tables for these guys here soon to get them all up off the ground. So it's a lot more of a pleasure to view them. But I, I'll be honest, I come down here and I lay in front of this, in front of Ollie's tank and in front of Elvis' tank and just watch every once in a while. Um, but yeah. All right. So we'll walk you guys over this one. All right. So y'all have been waiting. I've got a couple um, messages on YouTube from various people wanting to know what happened to this tank. Well, let me move this and flip my non-existent light on as you can tell like the little light in here is kind of pointless but what had happened i mean the tank is still semi set up i pulled the plants out pulled all the isopods out um but what had happened was the i guess from something i fed the um the frog or since I got him, I don't know what the dealio was, but I noticed that he wasn't, whenever I got him, he wasn't really moving. After like the first week I got him, I noticed he really wasn't moving a lot and showing like hopping like a normal frog. He was crawling and his back legs weren't working. That was just the start of it. Then after the fact, I'd have to, I, he wouldn't eat on his own. He wouldn't chase food. He wouldn't, he wasn't like the normal predator frog. You think they are. I'd have to pull him out from where he was hiding and feed him or else he wouldn't eat. And I'd have to like sit there for at least five minutes with a single worm, coax him out or coax him to, to snapping at it. And he'd finally go after it. Well, to make a long story short, from what I was gathering, he acquired a parasite or parasites and started to bloat really bad. And I contacted multiple vets around me and the closest one that would see me for him was, I believe, four and a half hours away. Um, and just to get the frog in not guaranteeing not guaranteeing that he would survive or anything like that was upwards of $180. I know to some of you that may not seem like a lot, but when you pay what I paid for the frog, not a lot. Um as bad as this sounds in the long run it's not really worth it because you don't know if they're going to survive or not. And this sounds so horrible and I'm so sorry, but I bit the bullet and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should take him up to the vet. Woke up the next day and he was floating and bloated in the water and was not responding. So <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's what happened. And 
As you can tell, this is the day that actually I found him, that this happened. I ruined the lid because I moved the heater. And, yeah, it was just a really, really bad situation. Um, but for now, this tank will stay empty because I'm still a little upset, still a little sad about it. Still to this day, and that happened, oh, man, um, December, beginning of January, I want to say. I'm still a little upset about it because I built this whole enclosure based off of that frog, getting one of those frogs. And people are saying, hey, well, why didn't you get it? Just get another one. Why didn't you just get another one? Because you <laughs> you own a frog for so long and you watch him grow and then it just somehow dies. So you're scared. To, I'm scared to get another one. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm scared that something's going to happen to one of my turtles, but that's why I feed them. A, a decent diet it's for that reason i don't feed them crickets i don't feed them millworms something that could hold a parasite potentially and harm my harm one of them no i don't want to take that risk and if i ever were to put anything in here i'd have to take all the substrate out clean it out let it sit let it dry and then reseal the bottom of the land area because what i was noticing is that water liked to creep into the land area uh, apparently my sealing job, which I thought was pretty freaking A1, did not, is not doing so well. So we'll go through and fix that eventually. I don't know when, or if somebody wants this tank because they're getting a bullfrog, they can, they can come grab it. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, here is the update for the, the reptile room. What is starting to come into a reptile room? Um, been super, super, super busy. Um, so making time for these guys and then content, trying to film for YouTube and making sure everything's fine and whatnot in everyday life. It's just been busy, but I mean, as you can tell, my tanks are staying, my two tank or my three tanks are staying fairly, very, 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 decent and clean and whatnot so i'm not as far as neglect i'm not neglecting these animals whatsoever that's not even a thought in my mind i'm down here i have all my stuff on timers all these tanks are 20 24 hours they're on timers but i'm still down here at nine o'clock 9 30 in the morning sitting with them making sure they they look healthy making sure everybody's fed and whatnot every other day i feed um sometimes yeah um not sometimes every other day but you no know, I, I go every other day feeding and they're uh yeah it's it's not really a handful but life just gets in the way so i can't really post videos and keep up with a youtube channel on these guys so yeah all right guys so thanks for watching the update video i guess you would say of the new house the new reptile room and whatnot um sorry i've been away for so long like i said life gets in the way and you can't really keep up with a youtube channel work with animals and i don't know if any of you guys follow the other channel but i've i'm building a race car right now yeah animals race cars that's my hobby but animals mainly, <laughs> as bad as it sounds. Um, for all of you that follow the car page. But yeah, thanks for thanks for listening to this long, really long TED Talk. Now, <laughs> thanks for watching this video. It means a lot that you guys want to see more content come about. Um, there will be plenty, as you can tell by the two tanks I'm, I'm setting up, there will be plenty of content to come. Um, also I forgot to mention, I'm tossing back the idea in this 40 gallon tank, the 40 gallon breeder. I'm debating on if I want to go the predator tank, like I was saying, or get another tank for the predator tank and do mud puppies. Yeah. Do mud puppies in the, uh, in the 40 gallon breeder. And I don't know if y'all know what mud puppies are. They're that, the little fish that, digs the holes, spits the mud out with their mouth, makes the little mounds and the tunnels and whatnot, and walk on their fins and everything like that, live out of water. Um, but yeah, 
Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, like. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think so far. Any insight y'all have, any tips, I'm open to anything. I try to comment back on every comment that I have. Um, if y'all want to see something, possibly, let me know. Let Just comment down below. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'm out.